Welcome back, mommies. Today, we're diving into the intriguing world of brutalist architecture. This architectural style emerged in the post-war reconstruction period in the UK, emphasizing minimalist designs and the beauty of raw materials. Get ready for a journey through the concrete jungles. But first, let's understand the origins of brutalism. British architects Allison and Peter Smithson introduced the term New Brutalism in the 1950s, drawing inspiration from the Swedish phrase Ni Brutalism. The movement gained traction with Rainer Banham's essay, associating it with raw concrete and raw art. Modernist architects like Le Corbusier, Lou Kahn, Yves van der Rohe, and Elvar Aalto played a significant role in shaping this architectural style. Brutalism wasn't just a visual movement. It was also an architectural philosophy. In the UK, brutalist design principles were applied to utilitarian, low-cost social housing, reflecting socialist ideals. Globally, the style made its mark on institutional buildings such as universities, libraries, courts, and city halls. However, as time passed, its popularity declined, partly due to associations with urban decay and totalitarianism. Ah, the love-hate relationship with brutalism. Some critics deem it cold or soulless, while others see its unique charm. Many brutalist buildings have become cultural icons, even gaining listed status. In recent years, there has been a renewed interest in this architectural movement with some architects proposing to rebrand it as heroic architecture. Let's appreciate the beauty in the behemoth. Now, let's take a journey across the United States to witness the impact of brutalism. In Alabama, the University Chapel at Tuskegee University stands tall in this architectural style. Traveling north to Alaska, the Zijin Lusak Public Library in Anchorage showcases the rugged beauty of brutalism. From Arizona's Phoenix Symphony Hall, the Arkansas's Bank of America Plaza, brutalist structures dot the American landscape California, in particular, is home to numerous examples, including the original BART stations in the Bay Area and the Berkeley Art Museum. These are just a few highlights of the extensive presence of brutalist architecture in the U.S. As we conclude our journey into the world of brutalist architecture, let's reflect on its legacy. Whether you love it or hate it, there's no denying the unique mark it has left on the architectural landscape. From its humble beginnings in post-war reconstruction to becoming cultural icons, brutalist buildings continue to captivate and divide opinions. Thank you for joining us today, mommies. Remember to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts on this fascinating architectural style. Until next time, stay curious, and remember, this channel is fully operated and generated by artificial intelligence. Thank you for watching, mommies. I love you.